please refrain from implementing the new direction from the governing body. So, there are officially congregations in the United States whose elders are now refusing to implement what was said in Governing Body Update Number 2 for 2024. No, this is not a joke. An announcement was made this week on the midweek meeting stating that the congregation should refrain from implementing the new direction on dress and grooming. The elders even refused to read the March 15, 2024 announcement to the congregation. The coordinator made this announcement on the service meeting. He even went so far as to say that we need further directions and explanations by the organization. Until such time, we ask you not to begin greeting disfellowshipped ones or change your attire here at the meetings. Could this be a schism starting? In some ways, I am surprised. In other ways, I am not. Has anyone else heard this in their congregation's reaction to the changes? Now, that was a post on the XJW Reddit forum. And if your immediate response to that is, oh, that didn't really happen. There's no way that happened. Well, then you don't know much about the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. And you, you missed some of the experiences that I have had. In a rural congregation in Louisiana where I gave a talk, a few months after I had given the talk, I found out that the congregation had been dissolved because the elders disagreed with one of the changes that the governing body was making in the early 2000s. The congregation went along with them. So they didn't just come in and remove the elders. They literally dissolved the entire congregation. This happens more often than you may think. We are still dealing with human beings here. It's just that you never hear about that or you rarely hear about that. When you're still in the religion, they hide it to, to try to make it look like things are more homogenous than it really is. Like everyone always agrees with each other when they really don't because that's not human nature. Now let me go through some historical examples of schisms that have happened in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. This is not new. Schisms have happened many times. When Joseph F. Rutherford became the president of the Watchtower after Charles Taze Russell, his term ended, that created a pretty major schism where a bunch of people that were still loyal to Russell's teachings just refused to go along with Rutherford and his teachings. And that created some offshoots of the religion, the biggest one being the Bible students, but there were others. I'll show a chart. In 1951, Nathan H. Knorr, then president of the Watchtower, disfellowshipped Jesse Hemery, the British branch overseer, from 1901 until 1946. And Hemery went on and founded his own group, the Goshen Fellowship, after he was disfellowshipped. And after World War II, some German Jehovah's Witnesses, who had been disconnected from the Watchtower because of everything that was going on in the war, they found out about all the changes that happened during those years and just refused to go along with it and splintered off. Now, here's a really interesting one. In 1948, the Roman, Romanian government imposed a ban on Jehovah's Witnesses that lasted until 1989. Many witnesses were arrested and sent to prison or labor camps, and members of the denomination had a limited communication with other witnesses and studied largely from older books and magazines. In 1962, the Watchtower altered its doctrine on the meaning of the phrase superior authorities at Romans 13.1. We've talked about that before. Identifying them as human governmental authorities rather than God and Jesus Christ, which is what they taught before. Now, the side effect of this, of these constant doctrinal changes of the Watchtower, in this particular instance, is fascinating. Many witnesses in Romania rejected that change, and some suspected it was a communist fabrication intended to make them subservient to the state. You see how that can happen? And in 1989, after the Romanian ban was lifted, members and representatives of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses were able to meet with thousands of long-separated uh, Romanian witnesses. Some Romanians still rejected certain changes and preferred their autonomy, forming the True Faith Association of Jehovah's Witnesses in 1992. There's a couple more, but that one was the most interesting to me because it shows how Watchtower's constant doctrinal changes does indeed cause 
pretty significant groups of people to splinter because they disagree with those things. Now, in 1956, the Watchtower Society representatives visiting Freetown, Sierra Leone, encountered another splinter group called the Ecclesia of Jehovah's Witnesses that had formed several years prior. When the Watchtower Society changed its interpretation about the superior authorities, some Jehovah's Witnesses in the USSR suspected that the change came from the KGB instead of the Watchtower. And this led to the formation of the Theocratic Organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, which discontinued use of Watchtower Society publications printed after 1962. The group had a presence in Russia, Ukraine, and Moldova, and claims to seek contacts with witnesses in other countries. The group does not publish any statistics regarding numbers of congregations or adherents, and has little or no public presence. After the 1975 failure for the end of the world that Watchtower had predicted, a lot of people left the religion at that time. When Raymond Franz was removed from the governing body in 1980, the great apostasy came and a lot of people left and followed Franz. A lot of Bethelites left. This stuff happens. It happens far more often than Watchtower would like anyone of Jehovah's Witnesses to believe. It's not as homogenous as you think. Watchtower teaches that all of Jehovah's Witnesses are all on the same page and we're all unified in worship. No, no, they're not. There are people who have disagreements, who don't like certain things that are taught or said. The problem is they don't want to speak up because they know the result means either soft shunning at best or full shunning if they get disfellowshipped for apostasy and then they lose their friends and family that were Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, I have no doubt that Jehovah's Witnesses are more homogenous than other religions, at least a lot of other religions, but they're not always on the same page. They're just not. I know many examples of people who would have little disagreements. Those were the ones they were willing to admit to. I know I myself had major doubts about the governing body's interpretation of how Armageddon was going to go down and who was going to die at that time. But they're held in out of fear of reprisal. They don't like to talk about their doubts. I certainly didn't talk about that one to anybody. I remember I was in a car group. This is very close to the end of my time as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was out in service and I was making a comment in the car group. I said, yeah, the end has to be soon because all human institutions eventually get corrupted. So if Jehovah doesn't come in and bring the end, you know, soon, the Watchtower would eventually get corrupted too. Oh, one of the sisters in the car group was so offended. She was so offended. I wasn't even awake at that time. I was literally just saying, if you look at human history, all human institutions eventually get corrupted. And so God was going to have to come and bring an end. or Otherwise, this one would be too. And oh, she was, she never looked at me the same after that. So it just goes to show you, there's, that's the response of super peony, physically and mentally and witnesses often to people who have reasonable doubts or make reasonable comments about things. That social pressure causes a lot of witnesses to be silent. But I know they doubt because they watch my videos. I have people who claim to be true, believing Jehovah's Witnesses, watch and comment. They try to defend the Watchtower in my videos here. But they're not supposed to do that. They're told by the Watchtower not to have anything to do with apostates, which is what I am and proud to be so. They're not supposed to talk to us. They're not supposed to have anything to do with us. And yet they still come watch their videos and leave comments to try to defend the Watchtower, which just goes to prove the point I'm making. There are witnesses who disagree with the Watchtower in some points or just ignore some rules. It's a pretty homogenous group, but not as much as you think. So when the Reddit poster said that the elders are telling that congregation not to go along. Well, again, I can't verify that to be true. It's not like that would be the first time that it happened. Some people are posting in response to that, saying, no, I don't believe that. That never happens. But look at the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, that stuff happens all the time. And here's some more interesting observations about that particular incident in the Reddit post. First of all, his congregation is in what's called the Bible Belt of the United States. He says that he's in the upper southeast United States. Now, I grew up in Texas, and I currently live in North Carolina, and I can tell you 
the conservative religious ideology in some areas, especially in Texas, but here too in North Carolina, it's not as bad, absolutely would reject some of these changes, especially the older people in the congregation. They're not going to be comfortable with beards, women wearing pants, brothers not having to wear suits. That's going to make some people very uncomfortable because it's considered disrespectful. And you can look through XJW Reddit and see some people posting threads where they're texting with family members that show that their PME, very believing family members are not comfortable with this. So no surprise to me that a congregation has a body of elders. It's hardcore enough to say, no, we don't want to do that until we get better explanation. And according to the original poster, the elders in that hall are very hardcore and judgmental and that this isn't the first time they've tried to push back on what the Watchtower told them to do when the Watchtower instructed congregations to send all their excess cash to the Watchtower. The poster said his congregation resisted that for over a year before they finally gave in. So it's not like this is new, but again, those kinds of things happen. Not everyone always agrees with the changes pushed down by the Watchtower. Look at the history. Another interesting observation is that elders who disfellowship people especially out of like vengeful or spiteful spirit. Now they're being told to go try to contact all these disfellowship people. The Watchtower wants to try to get people back in because they are losing a lot of members, especially in European and Western countries that have money and they need money. So they're trying to get people back in. That's my opinion. And can you imagine these elders who are haughty and prideful and vengeful now having to go groveling back to the disfellowship people to try to get them back in because the Watchtower is suddenly changing their stance and needing to get people back in. That would require an enormous amount of humility that a lot of these guys just do not possess. So that, it's got to be difficult for them. And one of the responders in that post made that comment, like, yeah, they're gonna have to eat a lot of crow to go back to these people that they, vengefully kicked out of the congregation. Can you imagine the response they're going to get from some of these people after they did that? Imagine what would happen if someone tried to, if you were disfellowshipped and someone tried to come back to you and get you to come in. Uh, Jimmy Bell, just the other day, he's not disfellowshipped, but he had an elder come to his house to try to invite him to the memorial and he gave him an earful, earful about it. Unfortunately, i he thought he had recorded it, but the recording didn't happen. So I'm sure that's going to happen repeatedly to these brothers who go to the homes of disfellowship people or try to call disfellowship people. If those people have woken up fully or at least enough to have severe problems with the watchtower, the elders, their harsh policies, and they're, they're going to have to eat a lot of crow and they're going to have to take a lot of flack from people. And they don't want to do that. If this congregation ends up getting dissolved over this, well, the Watchtower is just going to kick everybody out. So I'm going to go to other kingdom halls and they're gonna, probably just going to sell this one off and make them some more money too. The Watchtower does not have a choice here though, in my opinion. They have to liberalize. They have to stop being so hardcore when it comes to some things like dress and grooming. They have to. Otherwise, they're not going to attract younger people. Two out of three people, I quote this stat all the time, Pew Research Survey, two out of three people born to show witnesses leave when they become adults. The religion is getting older and older and older, and the Watchtower has to try to attract younger people into it to take on responsibility and keep the business running. They need managers, they need elders, they need people to keep running the business. And young people don't wanna do that. They're not paid. It's a boring religion. You used to have to dress in a very stuffy way. You couldn't have facial hair. You couldn't have tattoos. So they're changing all these things to try to attract a younger crowd. The natural side effect of that is though that older people won't like it. But Watchtower doesn't have a choice. The older people are going to die off. They're aging out. They need to get young people in or it won't continue. And inevitably, that's going to cause some fractures, some schisms. I don't know how large scale, but you're going to have a lot of unhappy, disgruntled people 
who look at these changes and like, that's not the religion I grew up in. We always said that we were different from Christendom because we were respectful at God's house coming at the kingdom hall. We didn't have facial hair. We dressed nice. And now all of a sudden you don't have to do those things. How are they going to look on those changes? And will that cause them to slow down because they get jaded to it? It very well could. I have no doubt it will for a number of people. The question is, how many? So, are we on the verge of another schism in the Kingdom Halls and in the Religion of Jehovah's Witnesses as Watchtower makes too many changes too fast and the older members just can't accept them? Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you seen anything like this happening in your congregation if you're PIMO? Has your family member complained about any of these things? I would love to know, so be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know if I missed any schisms, any fractures that you are aware of that happened. If you know of any dissolved congregations, please let me know in the comments too, so other people can see, yeah, this stuff happens. If you like this video, please be sure to like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you want to support the work that I'm doing, you can click the join button below the video. If you don't see a join button, there'll be a link in the video description where you can become a member of the channel and support what I'm doing. And as always, thanks for watching.